Welcome to the business conversation, Agri Business on Clean Money TV. I'm Odipo G. As always, you talk about agri business, everything agri business. With me is uh, Nick, and we have a special guest today. Uh, Oscar is joining us, and he'll be letting us know more where he's from, what he does, and why his passion is in agri business, and why he's so dedicated to this here agricultural sector of our country. Karibu sana, Oscar. Thank you, Adipo. Yes. Yeah, as, as rightfully said, my name is Oscar Kimani. I am a value chain expert. Um, for the last five years, I've been working with Transnational Bank, now Access Bank. Uh, started with uh, agribusiness partnerships, came to do marketing, corporate affairs, and now I've been working with the counties. And even especially working with the counties, the biggest conversation has been agriculture. So I've been assisting a number of counties in Kenya, around eight to create a partnership between financial institutions as us and them by creating value chain solutions, by consolidating value chain. We have done so especially in tea, in dairy, in coffee, and in cereals, especially we are doing uh, seed propagation for a number of companies like Kenya Seed and Seedco in the Rift Valley, using uh, reviving the old irrigation schemes like Perkera and one in West Pokot called Weiwei. Yeah, so that's have been my background for some time. I love agriculture for a number of things. Uh, number one, agriculture is the biggest job creator and a sustainable job creator. A research some time back by Kipra showed that agriculture is the top three job creators in this country where an acre of farmland uh, creates around eight sustainable value chain jobs. And if you look at the livestock sector in this country, it should be one of the most unutilized. Uh, because of broken value chains. And we have had huge orders some time back. I remember President Kenyatta went to UAE and came with a huge order for beef that you could not even fulfill 1%. 1%? Yes. At the same time, you find, uh, especially in the, in the counties where they are heavy on livestock, uh, a lot of the animals, maybe 40% of the animals, are taken out by drought uh, because a lot of the farmers or the herders do not yet see a livestock in a monetary form. They see it in four legs. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you find they stay with them and 40% of it is taken out by drought. And I remember in 2016, uh, with the CEO, we did a, a small research that showed that if around five counties are heavy on livestock, would only sell that to 40% of the animals they have, the amount of money they would get is more than what they get from national government for the five years. But that is yet to be seen in a monetary form. So I think one of the things I've been very instrumental about and very loud about is moving from agriculture to agribusiness. You have to look at agriculture from a business point of view. It has to be able to give you a return and pay for itself. If it doesn't, please buy a matatu. <laughs> because at the end of it is this. What matters is what you're getting out of it. I've seen a lot of elite people like us. After reading a certain newspaper, you go and borrow half a million and put it in a quarter. <laughs> or a plot of an acre, hoping to <laughs> and plant onions. <laughs> and plant onions. You know, onion is bad, but all of us, we know, there's a minimum level of anything. So, yes. I think I'm usually very, very, very strong on us landed people. But you don't engage in agriculture the same way our parents did, and yet you have gone to school. Yes. Part of going to school is to help us make decisions, especially investing decisions. But agriculture pays. The truth is, this: we are half of the country doesn't have food, and I've seen counties that that are bordering each other. Well, this one has waste, and, and the neighbors are, are in are starving. Mm. So half of the country doesn't have food, and yeah. the other half is eating bad food. No, no, he's eating bad food. Yeah. And of course, you've seen all these exposés in media about bad food coming yes, to, yes. to our market. So yes. it is that critical, because none of, I think the person who said that is Adesina, the, uh, the, the one who is heading Africa Development Bank, he said none of us smokes gas or drinks oil. Yes. All of us have to do food. And that's why we have to think of agriculture from two levels. Number one, we have to think of it from a national security level. It is possible that we are eating our way to death by having bad food come into the country. And also it is possible that we are starving ourselves to death. It is possible that we are getting people poor through agriculture than rich because when you have a lot of post-harvesting wastage, I mean, one season of plenty, the other season of luck. Yes, it's not helping anyone. It's not helping. Yes. When people invest their money in a country and then they cannot get their return back. When the markets have to import what we actually produce over here. When you have broken markets, 
our broken value chain that makes farmers invest in agriculture and yet they cannot get to the market. And that comes even to counties that are within 100 kilometers radius of Nairobi, people like Nyandaro County. I've worked there for some time and it is very sad to see that farmers almost give you produce for free. So where, where, does, where, does, where does the issue start? The genesis of the challenge? Where, where is it? Is it, is it with, the, with the farmer? Is it with the, the, the processing? Is, no. where, where, does, where does it start? No. Because there has to be a start has to, be a to the issue. I think if you go back to where agriculture started in this country uh, and looking at since 1963 when it got independence to date, you clearly see, number one, a lot of policy gaps. And there are some things only national government has done. I think the last rememberable investment in extension was in the late, early 90s. You remember every village had a small Datsun truck, 1,200, mm -hmm. and a lot of motorbikes, mm -hmm. which was actually an investment by a donor agency, not us. If 19, the early 90s is the last serious investment in policy, uh, in, in, in extension services. Extension, extension services is basically taking knowledge that individuals don't have and taking it to the villages, to the producers, that's number one. Secondly, when agriculture was put under county governments, there was a slight problem. Because it politicized agriculture to some extent. Because it, the, the, the policy we have for agriculture depends on how every county interprets it. And the truth is this, political power uh, pressures are not something to joke with. So sometimes a county can take a direction based on, on what is the pressurizing right now. I mean, it is possible to get a road done in a week and residents are happy, but it's not possible to have money in a week get into farmers' pockets. So the investment in agriculture needs to be depoliticized. It's the same thing. Health also needs to be depoliticized. It cannot be a political goal to deliver health care. It cannot be a political goal to deliver agriculture. And then the world has changed. Those days I remember when the, uh, you know, it used to have even, the prices for items would be gazetted. We are buying this at this time. But this, and it's fixed. But right now, uh, we are in a global world. I, I know many of our listeners consume Kamande. If you buy Kamande by Gunia, by the SAC, it comes from the US. It's imported Kamande. from the US. Yeah, Kamande yeah. comes from the US. Those two small, small beans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear all this... And look uh, at the consumption. Exactly. And the consumption is extremely high. When you hear all these... Uh, trade agreements being done by countries. They are simply opening each other routes for trade. So even the things you're producing over here, it is possible to have something produced over here that is more expensive than something that comes from across the seas. Yes. Reason being, some of those countries have heavily invested. They have made their value chain straight. There is lesser loss in the system. That means farmers can produce cheaply. And also because they are producing in mass, they have a less expectation on margins. Mm -hmm. But you see, it's possible to have something come from Zambia or Mozambique or the US, like Amandez, I'm saying, or even sweet corn that comes from the US. I remember last Christmas there was a promotion for chicken that was in one of these South African supermarkets, and they were doing a chicken at 300 over Christmas. Imagine. It has come from South Africa, it's been shipped, it has paid taxes, VAT import duty. At 300. But it's Retail. cheaper. Yes than what you're getting from local ones here, not even joking, even the mass-produced ones, the broilers. We are getting at 500, 600 because it's Christmas, it's cheaper. That tells you what. There are changes in the agricultural market that we have to remove the emotion from agriculture. We have to ask ourselves, what do we need to do to make sure farmers are producing affordably and competitively and they are doing good quality and third, they can compete. Because the truth is, as a consumer, we are price sensitive. Yeah. I mean, the biggest conversation has been maize. If you look at the price of maize in the high seas, or let me not even take maize because it's too depoliticized, let's look at sugar. Sugar in the high seas is anything yeah, between 21 shillings and 25 shillings per kg in the international market. Yeah. But how much are you buying in the supermarket? 110, 120. Yeah. We have been surviving in sugar because of some trade agreements that protect us. If those things are lifted, yeah. we are nowhere. Yeah. But you have to still to ask ourselves, are we best producing sugar? So some of those things have to be dealt with. The truth is this consumption is growing every day. Nairobi is growing every day. And people are no longer, the, the space to, 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 to produce for ourselves is going down. But at the end of it is this, unless value chains are completely sorted, tea has a very good value chain. It has issues with prices. But the value chain is slightly clear. What happens when you get your tea? 
But now the losses on the value chain now also have become major. You have to reduce any form of loss on the value chain. Mm -hmm. So that when a farmer gets his potatoes or his tomatoes and puts them to the nearest aggregation center. Because the other thing is, is every farmer wants to go to the market on their own. Yes, true. But the cost of doing that is very high because Odipo has an acre in Nyandaro and he does, let's say, 100 uh, sacks of potatoes. I have a nicker next to him, I do 59 because I'm not very efficient and I take them to Nairobi. He has two acres next to us, he does 150. Each of the three of us, if we go together and got a 10-wheeler truck, mm. would have gone to market at the same cost. But these three neighbors have gone to the market at three times the cost by their neighbors. So aggregation has to be invested in. And I think the guys who have done the very well is, 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 is trigger foods. Trigger foods have aggregation centers everywhere. Yes, yes. I was in Meru actually the other day and I saw some of the aggregation centers. Yeah. Absolutely Because what they do is they reduce the risk yes. and the cost of the farmer coming to Nairobi. The farmer doesn't mind taking a smaller hit on price mm -hmm. as far as this cost is taken out of him. Mm -hmm. Maybe the best example we give some time back is uh, Technosav in, in, in some few years back they did a value chain. Uh, management process in Maragua for bananas. The current chairman of KPCU, I think, then was working for Technosav. And they did a fantastic job. Because what they did is they made farmers understand the aggregation process and they would actually come and say in advance, I have 10 bananas on the way. So the cooperative would market bananas are not even mature. They would come to Nairobi and get prices for bananas are not even ready. By the time bananas are ready, they have a, they have a market for yes. them because it has a process. It's pre-sold. It's pre-sold. Pre so they're they playing like as if they're doing uh, the futures. So basically for you as a farmer, when you know my, all my bananas, the 55 of them are bought, you yes. take care of them. Yes. Like your life depends like, on them. Like literally your life depends on them. Your life depends on them. You've <laughs> mentioned, you've mentioned um, risk and you've mentioned value chain. Yes. So how do we, how, how, what are some of the mitigations that we can be able to put to be able to benefit quite a bit or benefit in a maximum way yeah. from a value chain? What are, some of, what are some of these risks that are across the value chain yeah, that we need to look out for, for those who are starting in agribusiness? That's a very good question. Mm. To make an investment viable, the first thing you have to do is de-risk it. The reason you find yes, economic, in economics you're told the most, uh, most viable investment is investing in government paper. And yes. government paper is usually the bones and bones. the bills, are usually the, the measuring rod. Yes of anything, whether as banks giving you rates or when you're, con when, you're, when you're calculating your opportunity loss or opportunity cost of any investment, you compare against the, ninth, the, the, the rate given by CBK. Why? Because the government is here to stay and the government gives an assurance of pay. It will pay. It will pay. Yes. And internationally, you can even, anyway, you can use a treasury bill even as a, as a security. So the issue is this, you have to think, what are these things that help us de-risk agriculture? The first thing I say, guys, is, is knowledge. Mm -hmm. the, the transformation factor from agriculture to agribusiness, number one is knowledge. You have to know, number one, where are the opportunities in this value chain? All of us want to farm, but I say not all of us should farm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because maybe your depot has been working for the, la the largest supermarket chain mm -hmm. in Nairobi. So he knows how things move in the market. Does he have to go and farm? I don't think so. He can be a consolidator. But you know, if he becomes a consolidator, he becomes a life to farmers. Yeah. But the first thing is, and I tell guys, if you look at the opportunities in value chains, beyond farming or beyond the basic production, whether it's livestock or crop, we have nothing less than 50 opportunities in each of this, including even how much supplies is done to the farms. I have a very young friend of mine, and she's supplying packaging material to farmers. And, Anyone who wants to do packaging. And that's her niche in, and that's the, her niche. in the in the, in the, in the value chain. chain. Yes. If you go to all these cattle manufacturers and see the department for agriculture, yes. you'll be shocked from flowers to guys who are doing avocados yes. to guys who are doing fruits. Yes. You don't have to you don't have to farm. You don't have to struggle. Like um, Ramco is doing our packaging yeah. and they do some excellent work. Yeah. The volume in fact if if the agricultural sector was to shut down they would have a problem. They would have a problem. Exactly. Actually, because most, most yes. uh, being in the industry, what I'll say is what drives these packaging companies is agriculture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you look at uh, the flower sector, let's, let's put flower it this alone. Flower alone, one farm around February will probably do an average of three, four million dollars. 
worth of business. Worth of business. Wow. Those oh, customers man. produce like five months in advance. Yeah. It's not, it cannot be last minute. Yeah. But you see now, how much produce is coming to Nairobi in sacks? Mm -hmm. Any buyer will tell you, as far as you bring your produce in sacks, it's not taken. Yes. Yeah. It has to be in crates or in cartons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Specific so we have to always ask weight. ourselves that fast risk in, in mitigator in, 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 in value chain mm -hmm. is, is knowledge. The second one is investor ability. Investor ability. What, what is that? What is investor ability? The investor ability? ability is this. Are you making an emotional decision or investment decision? Uh -huh. The difference between the two? Be the difference between the two is this. I feel I should farm. But I tell people, not, ev if you have, not everyone should do, not everyone should farm. What, what do you want to do in this? Are you making an investment decision or do you want a kitchen garden? But sometimes we make, doing it. we make, we make, we expect money with kitchen garden thinking. Mm -hmm. You have to ask ourselves, where is the market? I tell people many times, please make that farm on Excel make sense. Mm -hmm. If it makes sense on Excel, because Excel you put figures, not word, yes. on Excel. So that at the end of every line, yes. put a figure. Yes. Put a figure. Say, I'm going to, to market, put a figure for that market. Yeah, then you ask yourself, is this the thing making money? But also, Oscar, yeah. there is what is called, I always call them Excel sheet millionaires. Yeah. Yes. Excel millionaires. It's, it's a term but, I always but, use but you on know this what? guy. It helps. It helps. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. For the times I'm working in marketing, I used to have a very simple argument. Mm -hmm. If somebody cannot even take time to give me a good invoice, they will not give me a good job. The good, the good thing is this, mm -hmm. if it makes sense, of course, you cannot cheat yourself around money. Mm -hmm. I, I tell many people, you can cheat anything, you can cheat process, you can use any English you can to say, I have, even have a business card for the farm. Mm -hmm. But if those things go to market and no one buys, you go back with it. Mm -hmm. So the truth is this, let it first of all make sense on paper. As an investment decision, are all cost factored, are all risk factored, and is the price I'm getting enough to pay? And remember, you have to spread that income in the months you wait before you harvest to know how much am I making monthly. Yes, yes. So if you raise, I'm expecting half a million, and what I get is 100,000 in six months, you divide in six months, you find I'm getting 40, no, 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 40. If you decide 100 by six, is, is, is less than 20. Let's say, let's say even for, let's say 18. Yes. So is that 18,000 worth the investment for yes. half a million? So it's getting time value. It. Yeah. Then you have to, I always tell people, it is always as, you have to think what is a minimum viable product, MVP. The same thing you do in investments. Mm -hmm. What is the minimum I need to farm for this thing to make sense? That it is enough for me to break even, and is small enough for me to take in the loss, and is big enough for me to be able to learn. So, people, are, do you want to make to change your life with ten chicken? Is ten chicken enough to take care of the cost of ten chicken? And many I say, even in factories, well, the cost of idle capacity is usually more than the cost of production. Mm -hmm. You're getting it. And also I tell people, if I cannot meet them VP on my own, why don't I team up with the depot and you? Yes. And we agree, you guys, this thing makes sense. Can we after that go and look for a market? Can we go and ask somebody, where can we sell? And, and tell people, especially in agriculture, sometimes it's good because a big buyer, let's say farmer's choice, can give you a big order. But it is not only wise to look at that, because there's something in banking called concentration risk. You cannot concentrate your market on one client. If that one client closes, you're done. Yes. The day you start having piglets, think of where you can put up a butchery. Yes. Because what, what, what we do, we usually yeah. say, we usually say, and we have mentioned it quite a bit on, on this on this on this platform is have your market, have your primary market, your secondary market, your exactly. tertiary market. Exactly. Just in just case. Just in case. Things because these things happen. Because things happen. Yes, so you yes. walk around and oh, yeah. shops close. Oh, yeah. Or they have an open production for their main main producer. You know that that actually happened to us once upon a time. I know it has happened to many it, it has happened. We we produced uh, we had about two acres of French beans, yeah. Michiri. And we had a contract with an exporter. Mm. And then this exporter had, I think, 30 acres or so. Mm. And how the exporter had planned was their mishiri would be would delay. And ours would be produced faster, would mature faster. Mm. But it so happened that for some reason, God knows how, mm. both of them Keep matured at the same time. So guess, guess, guess which one they gave priority to? Their own. Yeah. So we were left with with tonnages and tonnages of, of, like of, of, mm. of machinery, imagine. Mm. And you see, I'll give you, look at the poultry business. It's, it's very bulk and very, it's very, because when you have slaughtered your chicken and frozen them and brought them, number one, I tell farmers, if you're doing chicken freeze, please don't bring to the market and frozen. Mm. Don't bring to Marikiti or city market and frozen. Mm. Because you can find last night farmers from Nyeri brought two pickups. Yes. Full. 
full and they are clearing the stock to get a new stock yes, yes. and you get into trouble. But these days now, technology has changed markets. Can you start looking for orders? Sometimes people, when you're producing some of those things, just get a motorbike and a rider. Mm -hmm. Let him deliver to a depot in Karen yes. and to Mwangi in Kikuyu and to James in town. And nowadays it's very easy. And as far as you freeze and you package very well, I mean, office delivery, actually, I think one of the biggest opportunities for agriculture is the last mile deliveries that Corona has brought. Yes. I know I saw a lot of jokes about BMW selling produce. Yes, yes, yes. But you know what? Some Lamborghini. of those guys who are Uber drivers, some of those guys who are employed may never get back to their jobs. At all. Yeah. Because they've actually because they realized, by the way. <laughs> I'm making more. I'm making more. Yeah. It is. Let me give you, let me give you an example. In fact, uh, with with the with the last mile delivery, mm. um, people can use apps like Avenue. Avenue uh, uh, Avenue is a, is a very good app where you can be able to just use to do the last mile delivery. There was a time we were doing um, tomatoes. Yes. It was very interesting. It was very simple. We were getting tomatoes from the from our greenhouse, mm -hmm. and then we were cleaning them up nicely, and then we were leaving the crown. Mm. Right now. Guys are using the nets, the red nets. Mm. Uh, it was the time when polythene bag, the ban hadn't come. Oh, yeah, so we were using the, 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 the nets. Yeah. You know, I went to Marikiti, bought the nets. They usually sell them at, in yeah, batches. Oh, yeah, there's, right. yeah if, there's the roll. Yeah. You can buy the roll. But then there's some people who, uh, they don't want the whole roll. So what these guys do, they cut for you. They ask you, how many do you want? So they cut for you, they cut for you, they cut for you. Yeah. So from literally right from the farm, we were, we were harvesting, cleaning, Packing them in nets, yeah. and I was delivering to offices. Exactly, and, and, and it was making it was making quite a bit of sense. From the farm, we would have sold at fifty shillings. And now you can sell at hundred. And we're selling at hundred, clean. So basically, what you've done is yes. you've removed some few players in the value chain. I don't call them brokers. Yes, just some few players in the value. Don't call them brokers. They're called yeah. consolidators. Consolidators. Yes. Yes. yes, please. I call them players in the value chain. <laughs> And by removing them, and you're going through the market, and I tell people, don't have to deliver in a car, it's too much time in traffic. Yes. Your work is getting a market and make sure you're getting paid. Just invest in a simple motorbike and simple put a motorbike. box, pay the license. And in fact, you don't even sometimes need to have the motorbike. Some of, some of, these, some of these guys who have uh, motorbikes are in some of these apps. Exactly. You know? exactly. Partner with them, tell them, by the way, I have this product that will be moving. X number of products every single week. For instance, you can have, uh, like right now what we're doing or on, on our website, on our, e on our e commerce platform, is we have delivery days. Exactly. For instance, we have Wednesday, Wednesday. and we have Friday. Friday. So whatever you order, just know the order is going to go on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I partner up with people like Avenue who have motorbikes. They have motorbikes, they have the platform, they have everything. So they know that on Wednesday, they'll, they'll give me deliver. three, four riders. And now when you are giving deliver. pre determined work to a rider. You can get a small price. Not like, yes. don't, not calling you a doofy guy. Yes, 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 yes. You no, can actually get a good check. discount. So, exactly, you can get a good because discount. Because of the consistency. And you see now, those now are the factors that are making agriculture work now. You have to ask ourselves, what is working? I mean, look at, if you look at international and see how much Walmart is moving, moving online, or you check how much uh, Tesco. Tesco is pu 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 pushing online in terms of fresh. It tells you there's an opportunity here. And the truth is, Odipo, sometimes you work in a place, you may do interviews here until evening. You may not have the time to go to the market to get fresh produce in the morning. Yes. But if we can tell you, you work. Let me deliver. I will I'll deliver. Doorstep. And naturally, not even, even in the office. Yeah. Uh, but he delivers in a package that you don't feel ashamed, ashamed to carry <laughs> this food home. Mm. You're getting it? So the person who is making that packaging, yes. Yes. That is that is Odipo Greens. Maybe I'm even giving you a business, business idea. Because people know Odipo by now. Yes. They know Odipo understands agriculture. Yes. If there's something called Odipo Greens, beautifully packaged, well colors, and the package comes at reception, everyone who will see that reception will also want to know who is this person who delivers it. Th th thank God we have beautiful packaging for our spices. <laughs> it helps. Yeah, it, it Those helps. right now, I tell people, Kenyans are heavy brand consumers, yes. not product consumers. Yes. There's a reason why a supermarket opens in an area and shops close. Yes. Pozo Depot, even if it's a bread, what are those days when packaging was, was, was allowed? Yes. Hey, you prefer to buy a bread from the next supermarket and yes. carry the that, that, that supermarket. That looks, you know, they look. Then buy yes, from they... Wangi, the shop guy you borrow from, when you have nothing. <laughs> So look, is an emergency look, contract. Exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 people from my house are coming to your yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have money, what makes you go to the next market? Because we are brand consumers. We are not vegetable consumers. Mm. We are consumers of Odipo greens. Yes. So some of those things are the ones that are making younger people who may not have land, who may not have investment, 
and 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 they're in this business big time. And what I'm saying, this corona has taught people things, by the way. People, no, people have been opened up. I'm looking at it this way. Uh, so that we don't really go far from uh, the financing bit. Okay. I just wanted to say th this. Uh, now, this young guy yeah. has come to you at the bank yeah. with a contract from Odipo. Yes. Okay? Mm. He's sh the business numbers are adding up. Yes. What stops you from financing him? Exactly. And I'll take some time to explain that. And I give it a very nice name. I call it Fundable Agribusiness Plans. Plan, yes. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these things are not even plans. Yes. They're just a wish list. <laughs> <laughs> so, start with, start with what makes... What no, makes no, um, tell us what, make, and what, what makes... And, what and, and I'll stay no, there. Let's start with what makes it not fundable. Exactly. And then we come to what makes it fundable. fundable. Yes. So what makes it not fundable, yes. number one, is the financing sector does not fund plans. Mm -hmm. Fund businesses. Okay. Uh -huh. what's, what's the difference? Just touch on that. The difference between a plan and a, and a business. The first thing is this. When you're looking at this plan somebody has come with, what makes it a business? Does this person go on and read a newspaper on Saturday and then they come with a nice plan? Do the people know the market? Do they know what they're doing? And you can tell very easily from talking and from what you're saying. Does this person have investor ability? Does this person have the skills and knowledge? What I mean by investor ability, I tell people, if you ever want to do business, start working on your banking very early. I actually have been talking to campus students, I'm telling them, when you're going to open a bank account for help, don't open those student accounts. You're going to close them in four years. Get a proper current account. Go to these banks that are not even giving you they are not even charging you an account because one of the things you find people are told that your banking history is not enough and I know that nothing crushes plans more than that yeah because uh, let me let, let me give, actually let me give you a, let me give you a cheat sheet uh -huh. or more Kenya when you're going to the bank yeah? you know when you're told to bring a six month statement what they want to do they want to check what is your average monthly yes because oh, wow. financing is not for what you call windfall gains Mm -hmm. It's businesses, it's process. Not that I went and got a deal for a million. It doesn't make you fun. Once you find, when you told bring a six month statement, basically we add up the money in and money out and get an average of both. Yeah? When you get an average of both, we get a, what is the monthly average? Basically, if you had a million in and 500 uh, and 600,000 out, that's 1.6 million, an average of both comes to 800. Mm -hmm. That 800, ask ourselves, for the six months, what is the monthly average? Because this money you're going to pay it monthly. monthly. Yeah. And I'll give the difference in paying monthly or what you call you pay at the end of it. I'll give both. Eh? But now you have to be sure that this person, if this does not work, will he be able to pay? And that's why I tell people, as you're farming, invest in the market side to make sure that you have continuous cash flow. Yes, you're farming potatoes. You're farming tomatoes. But please be in the market selling. Because if you get used to selling or deposit tomatoes, it's going to be easier for you to sell yours. But more importantly, you have a bank statement that is showing you have this. And even when, they, when CRB is calculating your credit rating and all that, they're checking, do you even have cash flow? And these days, softwares are very, very good in rating you by the minute. They can tell you, in a minute, they look at the statement, they can tell you, this person, the risk is this level. You're getting it? That's the first thing. So I tell people, when you, put in a, when you have a plan in your mind, Sometimes I encourage people, even if just register a business name, don't operate in your personal, just register a business name. You don't even have to incorporate. Each citizen is a thousand, Bob. Mm -hmm. Register that business. If you're going to the market, get the proper licenses. Because we know some of the reasons why some things will not be sold, you have no license. Yes. And there are so many licenses people underestimate. Yes, from the cabs. From to cabs, the, from the cafes the and all those. The nemas and you're whatnot. Yeah. So the reason we find the first time people are told not possible is they have zero banking history to show that the million they have been trying to borrow, which is someone else's money, that you used to touch in that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is, is that changes that now is contract fund. Mm -hmm. Do you have a contract from a buyer that is revocable? And I find some buyers actually have been giving a bank guarantee. They mm -hmm. give a bank guarantee and say, this person is going to buy from them. So if it's a credible buyer, if it's Twigger, Twigger now, I know a lot of banks are financing Twigger orders. Because Twigger keep their work. Yes. Mm. As far as they produce good stuff, Twigger will take, yes. take it. Yep. So when you're even looking for that market, but even if you're not having a major contract buyer like Twigger or Farmer's Choice, or Kenchik, or all those other big farmers, is it possible for you to show I have a market already? And how do you show there's a market? These are 2,000 that come to the account every day. 
But sometimes some people wait until they found their own and they say, by the way, Where's the, Where the market? And I've heard that so many times. Is Nick, that... you know, you know the way we've uh, we've come across so many th so, yeah. ma so, so many times in, a, in in the groups that we are in. Mm. You see someone, I have um, cabbages. 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 Exactly. Already done. Yes. Yeah. Do you know somebody? Do you know someone? Hey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Help me get market. Help me get market. Oh, yes. you see, we always get say market. market. Yes. And I'll repeat. I've I've always repeated this for a million times. Mm. Agriculture works in reverse. Exactly. Start Get the market, market then, then come, come to the money. It's not agriculture. Mm. It's everything. Mm. Yeah. I worked in a hospitality some time back, and I know if you want to put up a hotel, the minute you put down the first jembe or the first excavator yes. scoop, yes. Yes. is a time you set up a marketing office. Yes. I've seen hotels do expos all over the world with architectural drawings. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's what issue happens. Wow. You m go for every expo in the country, yes. magical Kenya, whatever, you go to South Africa, you go wherever. With, with uh, architectural drawings, is impressions, is yes. compare generated images. Yes. So that the day you will open, you know you already have the flow comes. The same with agriculture. The minute you decide to bring those goats from Masailand, because you can hear they make good meat for Christmas, start talking to butchers. Yes. Yeah. Because those guys are not waiting for you to come. No. They have been doing this before you even arrived in our yes, business. Yes. Start talking to a deep and say, by the way, in the next three months, I'm going to be producing eggs. So I want to be, I know you take eggs in your house. You start looking for bakeries. You tell them, I'm going to be delivering whichever crates you want to can deliver. Don't even go to look for it. Mm -hmm. Have guys who can take three quarter of your stock before you do anything. Yeah, then you start hustling for the and quarter of the market. Yeah. So yeah. when you're dealing with that issue of whether you're a market, you can have a sizable contractor. And so what you've been doing uh, where I work is, we work with something we call a tripartite agreement. Mm -hmm. And I'll, uh, allow me to share an, our experience with seed maize. Of course, you remember in your school, you were hearing about pericular irrigation scheme, bull irrigation scheme, mm -hmm. at some point went down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we approached by some development partners and the county government of Baringo to come together and work on a tripartite agreement where we, we, we help these farmers who are in a place that is completely potential for seed maize get to market. So as we're coming in financing, we came in to give them mechanization, to make sure that these guys can farm 8,000 acres profitably yes. and the cost of farming are going down. Yes. So, I mean, these guys can farm large scale. But third, we got a contractor on board and we got Kenya Seed, that's the best thing I should give. So Kenya Seed said, as far as they produce for us, we'll bring our agronomist and you're gonna buy at this price. So when you're financing it, we even know that financing this venture is profitable because these are the cost of production and this is the market price they're buying and this market is assured. Then we came in now and gave these farmers the inputs they need, money for inputs, for dawa and all those kind of things. So these guys stopped thinking about where to finance from. Yes to making it happen. And you've been doing that for a very, very long while. And when the county government of West Pokot came in, we worked together with them and Kenya Seed again to do way, way in West Pokot when you're doing seed maize. Yes. Yeah? So that tells you what. It's possible. Those farmers individually, if they came together, would not have gone in our financing. Yeah, because they would have worked as exactly. individuals. But, but now you're dealing with number one. The buyer, when they hear is a cooperative with 8,000 acres. They take you seriously. They take you seriously. Yes. And it doesn't have to be 8,000 acres. You can even uh, they give an example of Maragua. These are, Maragua is a small scale in Maranga County. We don't have big farms. Mm -hmm. I come from Maranga County. It's small scale farmers. But the cooperative said, in the next three months, we will have 100 tons of bananas. They are looking for a market for 100 tons of bananas. It is not Mwangi looking for his five bananas. It's a cooperative. It's a cooperative. Power in unity. And the power in unity. So the first thing that makes a lot of these plans not viable is the volume is too low to make profit. Mm -hmm. And I can, we can tell. So the, 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 the secret source in it is consolidation. Especially for us who are learning. Yes. Yes. It is wrong for people for you to go and have 500 chicken and have 500 and have 500. And we all go look for market and become if we bring Not even market. If we bring our house farm figure, you have 2,000 chicken. You bring the food for your 500, the food for your 500, the food for your 500. But we share the overheads for, because the overheads for running 2,000 is almost equal yeah. to the overheads for running. Yes. Because the watchman will not be less money. No. He'll still be the same money. Yes. Instead of having three watchmen, yes. you have yeah. one. Exactly. Yeah. There's no difference. So sometimes it is those factors that make a lot of those plans unfundable. So I tell people, the best thing is this. If you want to get into agriculture number one, work with an MVP. Work with a minimum viable product. 
Don't say, I want to start with 140 acres, and you've never farmed anything before. Yes. The truth is, is, are you... Because the first thing we'll ask ourselves, okay, oh, you want to get a million from us, what are you putting in? Nothing. Mm -hmm. But I know I can get there. Of course, all of us know that the, even the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, and this is a financial market. This is, this is not a bank's money. This is depositors' money that Central Bank of Kenya protects. Yes. It's purely OPM. Exactly. Yeah. You have to be careful. So even for you, even if you're in the investor and you have that half a million, ask yourself, is this the best way to do? Is this viable? Is this a viable? Is this, will this thing give me, first of all, the return of investment? Mm -hmm. Will I get the 500,000 back? That's sort of thing. Is there a chance I'm going to get it back? Don't, 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 even for us for banks, you're not interested in, in the interest. You want to get, first of all, our principal back. Yes. The interest is an income. We can, yeah. you can even sometimes stop income, yeah. but we want to get our principal back. Let's get our money back. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. We must always look at it. Is we have to look at agriculture as an investment decision. We must be an investment decision. Yes. So that now we don't put in commercial projects with a kitchen garden thinking. There's nothing wrong if you live in Kikuyu and you have some space in the back. Please don't buy eggs. Put a small thing over there. Mm -hmm. Have three chicken, but don't take that thinking into 500. The thing is completely different. Yeah, it's very game changing. Right. It's the, the game knowledge, changes. It's the knowledge you mentioned at the beginning. It's the knowledge right? you think. Yeah. So, and you must know, if you're putting down, if they say, ah, these chicken are laying very good eggs, eh? why don't I make them a hundred? Mm -hmm. But now when they are a hundred, you have a hundred eggs, and you have the two the children, the they cannot change. hundred eggs. Yeah, the dynamics change. The dynamics change. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sometimes, but, when, yeah, so we have to ask, if you start small, when you grow, you have to continue to think. And even the Bible tells us that, renew of our mind. Mm -hmm. When, when you're growing, renew. When, well, the way you used to think when you're in high school, you don't think like yes. that. Basically, transformation and the expansion of your mind are back to back. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. You, can have one you can't afford to be transformed and maintain a certain level of thinking. Exactly. If, if, if you have to be transformed, your mind also needs to expand to the level of. Exactly. Give us another thing that uh, makes businesses not fundable. Then we go to fundable businesses, because I can see time so, is, is really running so out. I think I've talked about giving the example of, uh, of Marigat, uh, our, our, our project with, with Perkele, I've talked about production risks, the input risks. Uh, do you have a way of assuring that input is going to be done right? The process risk, do they know how it's done? And then uh, do you have even mitigation for acts of God, rain? I saw some farmer yesterday on Facebook put up very sad pictures of a hailstorm. <laughs> I mean, that guy's greenhouse was full of white stuff. Wow. <laughs> so that's an act of God and don't question God. So how, what is your mitigation for that? And that's what you find sometimes people are doing greenhouse farming. Yes. Others are doing those shed nets. Yeah. I really encourage guys who are doing agriculture, especially if you're doing vegetables, yes. please do shed nets. Yes. It will help you from hailstones or heavy rain because it slows down the rain. Even, even, even uh, weeds. Even you weeds. have weeds control. And the moment you control your weeds, especially yeah. in some of these products, like for instance, we... We're doing something in Kirinyaga, a mm. place called Kagio. Kagio. So we're planting a lot of lemon grass. One of the challenges that we had as we started is because Kagio is very, very fertile. Very, very fertile. Very good red volcanic soil. But as our lemon grass was growing, so were the weeds. They were coming back to back. Mm. So we did something very simple. Um, Kagio is also very rich in um, bananas. Mm -hmm. And bananas shed off a lot of leaves. Mm. Okay. So one of the things that we did or are doing right now is we are taking the, the dried leaves mm -hmm. from the bananas, we are dicing them, mm. and then putting them as mulch. Mulch. Because mulching protects from, from mulching weeds. Because the moment you protect from weeds, your production level yeah. and your quality goes up. Yes. But now the most important one of that is called what's called the financial risk mitigation. Mm -hmm. The financial risk is the biggest problem. The Number one is a payment process. Do you have an assurance that the payment process is going to happen? Because producing is not the problem. Our fa coffee farmers were not had no problem in production. Production is excellent. It is a payment. Yes. When you look at the value chain out of the farm, it's clear. But that, that value chain out of the farm, it can, must bring money back. Yeah. So you must ask yourself, do you have an assurance of payment? Do you have contracts? Do you, even if you deliver to a shop, do you deliver with delivery notes? Mm -hmm. I've seen people deliver to shops. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the proof you delivered yeah. from? Me? Is the invoice? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Hey, coffee. Mm. Show me. Yes. There's then no they paper train. Oh, it's not they paper train. There's no paper train. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So I tell you, know, know. Know. <laughs> the, the day you start producing, please yes. go to downtown and get a delivery book for 400 shillings. Yes. Yes. 
if a guy refuses to pay, you can go to a police station and yes. say, I delivered, he's not paying. And this is his stamp. And this is his stamp. Yes. And this is his shop. Yes. You're getting it. That is, part of that is payment approved, uh, uh, assurance. Now, when you have some of these guys now, you can even get invoice factoring. If you're delivering to credible buyers, you can ask your buyer to talk to a bank that does your invoicing. The second one is enforcement. Do you have a chance of, do you have a way of enforcement? Contractual terms, delivery notes. Do you have default insurance? But three, what is your credit worthiness? Alternative income. That bank account must be busy. Don't wait for your tomatoes. Be selling at those tomatoes. Get used to the market. Actually, going to the market is very scary. And people want to play the fear of selling. Yes. That thing is crazy. Part of it is this. Sell other people's tomatoes. Get used to selling and being told no or talk up. Mm. Until you get used to no, you're not a market. Yes. And you're not in business until you're told no and you say, fine, but I'll be back here tomorrow. Like, yes. I'll still do it. What exactly. do you, you don't now, want tomatoes. What if they come with bananas? Exactly. <laughs> But now, if you bring yours from the farm and it's the first time you're told no, you have crushed that guy. Yeah. The guy that, now that, that person switches from selling to begging immediately. Desperation. Desperation switches Desperation in immediately. Kicks in, yes, because you, so what, what happens is there's usually enthusiasm and then you're shut down by a no. And then fear comes in and desperation kicks in. But you see, the thing is, let's be honest here. No farmer ever prepares for a no. Uh, but you see, you need to get used to you it. You need to get because used to it. We think everyone eats meat, <laughs> which is true. But we you are not eat, the only supplier. Eat from you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you see, eat from you. in selling, we say, you know, that if you look at the wholesale cycle, twenty percent will always survive. Yeah. So if you want to sell to ten guys, multiply by ten. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say you you the cycle of how how many guys say yes is ten percent. That means the target you have, you multiply by ten. Yeah. If you know 20% of your customers say yes, multiply that by five. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, get used to selling in advance. Get used to no's. Get used to yes. Get used to no. I don't want that produce. I've seen people who have taken to uh, a buyer and they have excess. They say, I don't want. They got the nearest bus stage and they yeah. open the vehicle. Yeah. And they sell everything. We did that with the, um, when we were doing uh, Kunde uh -huh. and uh, Skumawiki. Uh -huh. We actually, actually in... in, in Don't home. Yeah. Don't home. Downtown now the 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 exit the exit from Don Home where now people are going into yeah. the Vitongojis and the Vijijis. Yes. Park there, my car. Opened and, up and the boot. Vegetables are big. Yes. And they are well. -paid. And we were selling. And you sold. And we sold. And, and, and I say <laughs> yes. you have to have you have to get used to that. Yes. Because you have to always know at the level I am in, I have my kind of risks. Yes. When I go high, I have my kind of risks. So that is very important. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to get the right financing mix? I've seen people taking short-term credit to finance long-term projects. You take money from a Shylock, or you say, I'm getting an overdraft, but you're gonna farm, you're gonna produce in six months. So it helps when you're looking for financing to always know, can I get a payment, I can do a bullet payment in six months? Mm -hmm. Maybe I slow down on principal, I pay the interest, and then I do a bullet payment. Or I tell them, actually, I have a, a contract with the farmer, with the buyer, and I've told them to pay me through this account in this bank, mm -hmm. And, and if you look at how employed guys are given salaries, uh, given loans on their salary, mm -hmm. is because the employer says, I'm only going to be paying through XYZ Bank, yes. which is, and I'm confirming I'm not paying through another one. Yes, yes, yes. Can you ask your buyers to work with their bank? That the money will be pulled, so if the buyer is in XYZ Bank, you also bank there. Yeah, bank there. To make it easier to get this big account to have your your invoice is factored yeah, exactly. and that is extremely important and that way now i'm sure we can move agriculture to agribusiness yes. and another thing and i'm even like you're talking about about money is an investment decision mm -hmm. people must only invest if not let us do kitchen gardens and the government is investing kitchen gardens right now yeah, so because we have gone back to the place where we have a problem with enough food and you have a problem with nutrition and they're saying if you have some small backyard i mean i was somewhere yesterday and i saw such a beautiful model of people doing sukuma wiki using this uh so, these sacks or these ones for for cement the 50 kgs one yes, 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 it just yes, folded, it's folded and, and each of them has three four sukuma wiki and i was like you have a small yard yeah. you don't even have to plant the soil down yeah. don't even touch the soil yeah. alongside farming. your wall you can have vertical enough farming, yes. vertical farming so if we need to do kitchen gardens let's do kitchen gardens and do them properly, and do them properly. but let's not have a kitchen garden thinking in a commercial venture It doesn't work. It the doesn't mindsets work. are not in The mindsets are not the same. No. Now, yeah. give us, give us um, at least three points that make agribusiness 
plans mm. fundable. Fundable. Yes. Number one is the credit worthiness of the borrower. Credit worthiness. This is my question. Eh? Everyone asks. Everyone says nowadays, Niko CRB. Mm. Mm. So get out of CRB. Okay. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. You know, I have a concern, especially with the slightly younger fellas between the age of 18 and 25. Those guys are going, they get a SIM card, they borrow from an app, they throw the SIM card. Yes. Thinking they'll never be caught. Exactly. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Actually, you find somebody has done only five apps, borrowed, 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 10, 20, 30K, yes. thrown that SIM card, get another SIM card, like in three months, you find a guy has borrowed 400,000. Wow. Because the guy has bought like 10 SIM cards. Yes, yes. The problem is this. The first month, the second month, the third month is fine to run around. But after the fourth month, your credit rating is so bad, it will take you very long. And these days, it is a requirement for any kind of funding, even borrowing airtime. Mm. People forget that. Even on Mshwari, or if you're doing all those Safaricom products, they check your CRB rating, mm. even whether you're going to borrow airtime. Now, the problem is this. People are doing that thinking they can run out of it. But secondly, I tell people, even if you have a problem with a loan, go to the bank, negotiate, start paying small amounts, let them get your OCRP. Because having been listed is not the problem, is the loan continuously staying as an unserviced loan. That becomes the challenge. The challenge is not that you had, of course it gives you a slightly lower score, but if this loan turns into a performing loan, it gets a better score. And you find, by the way, go and pull your CRB statement. You find people have a thousand here, two thousand here, I'm sure he forgot, or M whatever forgot, but the system does not forget. Mm -hmm. It is saying, saying this loan has not been paid for 840 days. Yeah. But how much money is it? It's 2,000. Mm -hmm. So tell people, the same way you go and get a check on your vehicle. Please, every three months, go and pull your CRB statement. Yes. It's 100 shillings. Well, where, are they, where, are they get, where can they get the CRB statement? Oh, this Metropole is the best one. Look for Metropole. You can even download it by app. Oh, cool. by all, you, I think you pay 100 shillings. Yes. You get the first one free. You can just request 100 shillings. Yes. Or go to your bank and tell them, give me my CRB statement. Mm. You're getting it. Always, because that is your financial health. Yeah. Yeah, because guys don't know, actually. Uh, because, you see, I always tell people, being on CRB is not a problem. Everyone is there. Yeah, being, being there is not a problem. Being listed on that statement shows you have a loan. Yes. You're getting it? It is not bad to have a loan. It is bad to have an unserviced loan, especially a loan that stays for too long not being serviced. As far as a loan is being serviced, it is not, even if it was listed as a bad loan, but the loan is performing. But the problem is, is people are having issues because of small things. You bought it from him, sure, you threw away that SIM card. You bought it from him, whatever, you threw away that SIM card. Actually, I see, the day, what you call service providers will be allowed to list defaulted people. Who, some in, some internet you never paid somewhere. Yes. Oh, you know, some phone bill you never paid somewhere. Yes. I think it, the it, guy it, who is editing this should edit that part. Yeah. <laughs> that's, an idea that can, that's an idea that will help people. You have some rent use. Some rent use, you know. <laughs> Only that night is limited to financial services. Yes. So credit was next, number one is that. Secondly, is you have to be able to have have volume, to, as you're told, don't, when you get money paid, this day Safari sends, don't say that your, your, your lip and I'm person will be drawing money from your phone. No, let the money hit your bank account. Mm -hmm. Let the money hit your bank account. And it's possible to do that these days. Yes. Now, spend everything from your bank account. Do not bank profits, bank sales. Mm -hmm. Bank everything. Everything. Mm. Bank everything. The farmers who are deeper supplying you pay from your app. Just go there or internet banking in the evening, schedule them, then send, 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 send. That money must hit your account. Mm. The problem is, is many guys bank only profits. Mm -hmm. So you find a guy is selling 50,000 in a day, but he banks 5,000. Mm -hmm. Your credit worthiness is 5,000. Yeah. You remember the volumes I told you? The <laughs> cash in, cash out, you get and the average. average yeah. It will get an average of 5,000, yes. but you touch 50,000. So it's important people to know how to work with banks. And I tell especially young guys who hope to go into business after campus, do not get a student card that after four years, that account is thrown away. Yes. Tell your bank, give me a personal account. A personal account that is a current account that I can continue with. Mm. You're getting it. Because a savings account, you cannot borrow against a savings account yes. by law. Yeah. Get a current account because maybe you may need this account to save, to, to borrow from. And then I tell people, if you're doing small business, even if you're selling fruits in campus, 
please bank that money by employees. Throwing that money. Yeah. As far as you have an idea and interested in business, go to a citizen and register a business there. Call it Odipo Greens. Mm. That business, put all this money for sales there. Don't keep money. I'm seeing a lot of these options for saving on funds. It does not increase your credit worthiness. It's your put bank that account. money in your bank account. Bounce it off your account. Bounce it off to your circle. Yeah. You're much better because that one can help you more. The third, so I've told you that money is credit worthiness. Yes, yeah. The second thing is what you call the knowledge factor. Can you tell this person knows what they're talking about or they, they read in the newspaper? And knowledge is, I have been selling tomatoes in toy market. Now I want to farm. Yes, yes. I have been having 500 chicken for eggs. Now I want to grow to 2,000. Yes. That knowledge is very important. You know your market, you know your production. Because I tell you, in business about the production and the payment process. And the payment process, yeah. You're getting it. That's the second one. Mm -hmm. The knowledge in this. But third, you must get what I call the relevant value chain activity. Mm -hmm. This value chain for this item, yes. it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You must ask yourself, as an investor, where am I best at? Am I best in farming or am I best in selling? Mm -hmm. Or even transport. Or even transporting. Transport. Mm -hmm. yes. So you must always look for what you call relevant value chain activity and you play where you're strongest. In a football match, you cannot put a defender in the in the yeah, forward. Or a goalkeeper. Or a goalkeeper a is a strike. Yeah. You're getting it. So you have to ask yourself in this value chain called tea, where do I play? In this value chain called chicken or pottery, where do I play? In this value chain called greens, where do I play? Always make sure that the activity you're dealing with is relevant and it can give you money. And fourth, look at agriculture as an investment decision, not as a buy the way. Do not use a kitchen garden mentality. It's what, it's what we say here. We usually say that many people get into farming with an agribusiness. With an agriculture mentality. Yeah, agricultural mentality and an agribusiness expectation. Expectation. Yes. Exactly. You're and expecting him to get huge returns. Yes. But the thinking on how you're doing your things is kitchen garden. It's kitchen garden. Exactly. And expecting a farm. And you're expecting a farm. It doesn't no, you don't get there. Yes. So remember, it's a great business. The business decision that makes sense. And business is basically you produce at a lower price than you sell. Yes. That is business. The most period. Basic yes. That's, thing of that's business. because in between is profit. Exactly. In between is profit. You must spend lesser and get slightly more. Yeah. In between is profit. The profit is what makes this business venture. What happens is this if that doesn't happen, agriculture can gradually make you very poor. Mm. But it's not painful because you have a salary somewhere. Yes and you're paying the loan with a salary. But if you don't have a salary, something good to ask, without this salary, can this venture stand on its own? Yes. It actually tell guys, give every business a six month lifeline. In six months, can I get a salary from this business? If the answer is no, please don't do it. You'll end up getting stressed and depressed. Or oh, think now, where is it relevant? Yes. Yeah. Than going to plant tomatoes, we have to go and look for soil, I have to go and look this. But why don't, why don't I look for market? Yes. I've been a marketer. Yeah. I have been working in a place where I've been supplying. Why don't I look for those markets? Yes. Get orders, get orders. Tell them I'm going to bring you tomatoes or this, at this price. Yes. Give me an order. Tell them, give me 200, 200, 100 kgs, 10 kgs. If those big orders are not possible, talk to your friends. Everyone is eating onions every day. Mm -hmm. Everyone is eating eggs every day. Yes. Yeah. I've seen a lot of my friends bringing rice from where? Mm -hmm. But they bring to my office 10 kgs. Mm. I don't have to go and look, it's cheaper, yes. it smells nice, and I feel nice, I'm supporting my friend. Yes. But he brings me good rice. Then you, at some point, that I've seen some friends of mine now start to package. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine called Moretti. Now he's packaging, mm. and I'm happy. That now he brings me branded. 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 We said, or deeper greens, when it comes to the reception there, yes. then we're like, where do you get that from? Odipo you see, ah, yeah. Odipo greens. Yeah, it's, it's, and it has tomatoes, it has sukumawiki, it has spinach, it has kojet, it has what? Yeah. This package, how much is a thousand shillings? That person thinks, I don't have to go to the market. Yes, the hassle. The hassle. Yeah. Now, remove that pain. You don't have to have very big customers. Think on how you can get to consumers. Think on how you don't sell products. Sell a brand. Mm -hmm. Because this brand, it helps you to have repetitive buys. Yes. That Odipo buys one, or James buys again, or Oscar buys. And Oscar tells you, you know what? Give me a th that package every Thursday because I know Thursday I go straight home. Yes. Bring it at three. And it pushes me until. And pushes me in the next Thursday. Yeah. Now that person gives a company demand. And that means it's possible for especially the younger folks to be able to come into an industry even if they don't have land. 
Very good. So, in, in, in conclusion, because, you know, we have, we have compressed so much information, yeah. and I feel that um, we'll need to unpackage it, <laughs> unpackage it at some point, and time is not... No, it, it, what, what you're saying about 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 branding and packaging and yeah. um, consumers are, are into aesthetics is something that I can testify to because one of the things that is helping us just grow in our business right now is our packaging. We, I mean, our spices and everything. In our packaging, smartphone. yes, our packaging is what sells. It must work for me. Yes. When you bring me chicken that you've slaughtered and you're frozen. Just go to and buy a vacuum sealer so that now when I don't carry it, it goes dropping a liquid yeah, in my right, car. Right, right, yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And vacuum sealers are very, 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 very cheap nowadays. Yeah, cheap. They can get small ones, ones small even small ones. ones. Yes. Yeah. You yeah, can yeah, get one. one you can, that can even tie to, can even vacuum. The same way we, we yes, house sausages are packed, vacuum yes. packed and sealed. Exactly. Just go and buy a vacuum sealer. If you're delivering meat, please Do vacuum seal. Mm. So that now. Carrying your meat does not become a pain to me. Now I have to think on how I'm going to dry. Packaging. I have to go and clean my car because Towers, now. Costs. And then, of course, now when I'm leaving the office and I have a line following me, <laughs> people are wondering, Oscar, what are you carrying? <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's so, red. And it's red. Like, are you bleeding? Oscar, are you, are you, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay? Yeah, 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 you okay, getting okay, it? And remember, the yes. consumers have changed. Yes. Consumers are brand from me. They are brand people. Yeah. The market is not on products. It's brands. Yes. yes. And that's, that's, that's basically how it works. Let's... Let's do some parting shots, and then chances, chances of us uh, unpackaging this in our later, in the subsequent shows are very high. Mm. This, this, this is something that we'll need to just break down. What we've talked about, you know, the, fund up, the fundable business, uh, what makes an agribusiness plan fundable, we'll need like a whole show for that. Okay. Then we jump into the ones that are not fundable, you know. Then we look at the value chain that you've, you've touched on also. And then we go into the mitigations of the value chain because it is better, I usually, I usually say that um, it is better to, to take care of uh, a problem before it comes. Exactly. It's, called, it's than, called planning. It's called planning, yes. It's called planning, yes. A solution, a solution is better than a prevention, exactly. you know. So, um, when we're looking at it from the holistic perspective of what we talked about, we'll need to unpackage each and every single thing. Yeah. And uh, here we'll, we'll probably have three or four more shows. Tafadali, it would, be, it would be great to have you, Oscar. Yeah. So, uh, parting shot, Nick. Uh, if you can't eat from it, from, if it can't pay you in six months' time, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Flip it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Oscar. Parting shot for me is a business. Think of it as an investor. An investor puts money where they can get it back. Think of it as an investor. Learn. Prepare. Do some models here and there. Know what is required and do it. Agriculture requires hard work. Anything that tells you that you don't need hard work is a lie. Mm -hmm. There's nothing easy in this world. But everything that you put hard work to pays, and agriculture pays. And I look forward to seeing more young people in agriculture because we must eat. And as Adesina said, none of us drinks oil or smokes gas. Mm. We must eat and we must drink. And looking forward to seeing much more young people, especially successful in agriculture. Excellent. This has been another business conversation on Clean Money TV, Agribusiness Talk. Our special guest today was uh, Oscar, who we have uh, adopted <laughs> because we'll need him to come to to just explain to us some of the things that he has mentioned and break them down so that we can understand fully. I'm Odipoji with Nick saying goodbye and take care.